Happy birthday, Tetris. Tetris, the granddaddy of all those puzzle games like Candy Crush, things that keep us puzzling away for hours, days, weeks. Tetris is pure game. There's no, uh, nothing, no benefit, there's nothing to learn, there's no uh, social or political consequences. In fact, it's almost completely pointless. But in a weird way, it keeps us coming back for more and more. Why is that? Tetris is so Moorish that one writer called it a pharmatronic, an electronic with all the mind-altering properties of a drug. The so-called Tetris effect is when you close your eyes at night after a few hours of playing the game and you can still see the blocks falling down in your mind's eye. Or you look at patterns on the floor and you make uh, tessellations of the Tetris blocks uh, in the tiles. Some interesting research using Tetris uh, investigated how people uh, identified how to rotate the blocks. So there are two ways you could do this. You could, in your mind's eye, mentally rotate the block and see which angle fitted with the lines below, or you could press the keys, rotate the blocks, and then do a quick visual comparison. The researchers found that people much prefer, in almost all cases, to use the keys to rotate the blocks. So one of the reasons Tetris is so compelling is because it's easier to think with the game than to think about the game. The researchers call this epistemic action, sharing your mental representation with the world, in this case the game world of Tetris. So the lesson of Tetris is that involvement in a game comes not from high resolution or being realistic, 3D graphics or surround sound. Immersion in a game world comes from the ease with which you can interact with that game world, the ease with which you can read and act upon the game. So I've my own theory about why Tetris is so Moorish, of course, and that's to do with a phenomenon that psychologists call the Zaganic effect. The Zaganic effect is named after the first person to write about this, Bluma Zaganic, who completed her dissertation on it in 1920s Berlin. The effect is based on the observation that the waiters in her local cafe had a perfect memory for all the orders they'd taken but which they hadn't completed by delivering yet. The orders they had delivered had fallen away completely. They could not recall a single detail. So this is the Zaganic effect, memory for uncompleted tasks. And this is what Tetris does so wonderfully. It's a world of perpetual, uncompleted tasks. Every line you complete, more blocks fall from the sky. Every block you put in place creates another terrain within which to slot the next block. The game is endlessly generating tasks, lines, for you to complete, and it's endlessly supplying you uh, a terrain on which to exercise your visual insight. You immediately see where the next block needs to go, but as soon as you put that block down, you have more tidying up to do. So Tetris shows how our minds are organized around goals. Our memory is not just a filing system into which information is passively stored, but it adjusts dynamically according to our purposes. This is exactly what you would want to survive and thrive in the world. You need your memory to be responsive to what you're currently trying to do. And after you finish something, you want your memory to stop bothering you. So, hence, you come out of the exam and you feel like you've forgotten everything. The genius of Tetris is that it takes advantage of this memory hook for uncompleted tasks. It involves us in a compulsive loop of completing and generating new tasks that keeps us endlessly playing, wanting to do the next thing.